Good evening to you. I pray that your week is going well so far. And we are here to give honor and glory to God's name. We are grateful to God for his blessings and for the way he continues to lead in our lives. And so I praise God that you have seen it fit to to spend time with God to, because you understand the importance of having God lead and guide and shape your life as you continue to live from day to day. We are living in times where we need to see God's face to an ex and experience his power and his presence like never before. And so my prayer is that as we continue our study for tonight, that we will be reminded of the God we serve, of his grace, but also of his power, of his providence, and of his leading in our lives. And there is none like him. And so remember to put God first in your life, in your family's life, so that your children and everyone in your household may know God. And so we're going to sing a song or two and continue our study of the 10 plagues that plagued Egypt and make some application to us today as children of God, modern day Israel. Let us pray and get into our study. Father, we praise you. We thank you for your blessings. We come tonight in the, midst, in the middle of this week. We pause from school, from work, and from all other activity to focus on you, to hear your voice, to feel your presence, to experience your power so that you would continue to lead and direct our lives. And so we pray that as we worship you, as we open your word, that indeed, you may show up in a way that we have never seen you show up so that we would be reminded that God is still in control. In your name we pray. Amen. Number 590590, trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can arise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Verse four, but we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way 
to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. All right, so we are continuing our study of the plagues, the 10 plagues that struck the Egyptians. And today we will look at plague number four, the plague of flies, the plague of flies, which is taken from Exodus chapter eight, verses 20 through 32. Exodus chapter eight, beginning at verse 20, and we'll read through 22. I am reading from the, from the um, English Standard Version of the Bible says, then the Lord said to Moses, rise up early in the morning and present yourself to Pharaoh as he goes out to the water and say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me or else if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of fly on you and your servants and your people and into your houses and the houses of the Egyptians shall be filled with swarms of flies and also on the ground on which they stand. But on that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen where my people dwell so that no swarms of flies shall be there, that they may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Thus, I will Put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign shall happen. And the Lord did so. They came great swarms of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses throughout all the land of Egypt. The land was ruined by the swarms of flies. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, Go sacrifice to your God within the land. But Moses said, it will not be right to do so. For the offerings we shall sacrifice to the Lord our God are abomination to the Egyptians. If we sacrifice offering abominable to the Egyptians before their eyes, they will, will they not stone us? We must go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice the Lord our God as he tells us. So Pharaoh said, I will let you go to sacrifice the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you must not go away, go far away. Plead with me. Then Moses said, behold, I will go out from you and I will plead with the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh's the servants and his household tomorrow. Only let not Pharaoh cheat again by not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord did as Moses asked and removed the swarms of fly from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from the people. Not one remained. But Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also and did not let the people go. As we know, we've been studying this series about God hearing the cry of his people from Egypt, the children of Israel, because of the way Pharaoh had been treating them. And God sent his deliverer in the person of Moses and Aaron to tell Pharaoh 
let my people go. And of course, Pharaoh refused because the Israelites were the people that worked and provided for, for their country, helped to build the land and build all their buildings and their streets and everything. And so without the Israelites, Pharaoh would not have free labor. And so there's no way Pharaoh would wanted them to go. Uh, the other point that we must remember is that Pharaoh did not know this God. He did not know the might of this God and Pharaoh considered himself to be a God. He was a great, mighty, powerful leader, maybe the first world leader. And so the whole world bowed to him. So there was no way in Pharaoh's own imagination that he was going to listen to any God or any person who would come to him and tell him, you know, to let his workforce go. And as we know, plague after plague came and, and Pharaoh was shaken up. He was a little worried, but being the strong, powerful leader that he was, he was not going to give in to a leader uh, without a fight. And so, yeah, he tried and he thought about it and the people cried, but Pharaoh decided that each time for the first three plagues as we have studied, that he would not let the children of Israel go. The Bible said that God hardened his heart. And I believe um, that this took place because God wanted to reveal to Pharaoh, to the children of Israel, and to all the nations around that there was no God like him, that he was the greatest, most powerful God, not just a God of the sea, a God of fertility, a God of, of the trees, of, of, of production in comes of, in, when it comes to plants producing fruit or a harvest, but he was a God of everything, a God of the whole universe, which Pharaoh did not yet quite understand. So God wanted to use this process so that by the end of the day, Pharaoh and everyone would know the power of this God. It is amazing that we serve this great and mighty God. Um, you know, I, I've been blessed to travel the world and to see people with all kinds of gods, gods made of wood and stones, gods that men themselves made, and, and yet they bowed and worship these gods. But the God we serve is not a God that we made, it's a God who made us. He is greater than us. We are subject to him. In fact, the Bible says that in him we live and move and have our being. Our existence is on this earth is here because of God. So whatever we face, whatever we're dealing with, we must know that the God who created us is able to solve that problem, fix that situation. But we need to make sure that we have a relationship with him so that when we call on him, that he will indeed answer. And so the plagues of flies came upon this uh, nation in great swarms and destroyed everything in its path. You know, I, when I think of it, though, I think that they had to be, Moses had to have a certain level of bravery or confidence in God to step forward to this great, what we call a despotic king, meaning that if anyone opposed him, he would just kill them, destroy them. And even though he was such a great and powerful king, Moses was not afraid of him because Moses knew that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, that the God that was on his side was greater than the enemy that was beside him. And it's important for us to know that whatever we face, the God that is on our side is greater than anything that we face. And so we could face it with confidence knowing that God is leading our path. Amen, amen. So the children of Israel, uh, as the flies came, you know, I, I, I just wish I was there, I could see that sight. 
with this great swarms of flies just coming, but a, a wall just built up of flies at, at the entrance to Goshen. The flies could not pass that area, could not cross over into Goshen because God had set it in such a way that the flies could not enter. Reminds me of Job. All the devil did to attack Job. And God gave Satan permission to, um, to take his children and take his cattle and take his stuff and even attack his body. But God said, you can go this far and no farther. You cannot take his life. And we face so many attacks, but know that God is still guiding and shielding and protecting your life. The devil can only go this far and no farther. And so the flies came and destroyed everything, but he could not attack the children of Israel. The children of Israel were then able to see and know that God was working on their behalf. And so, can you imagine how their faith is getting stronger and stronger because they could see God working out this plan and God is now listening to their call and God is now showing up when they need him. And, and that's what a relationship with God is all about. That's how our prayer life should be. When we pray and we see God answering our prayers, you know, we must know that, that God is moving in our lives. The job we have is not because of our intelligence, but because it's a gift, the ability to do the job is a gift that God has given to us. He is still working. He is still leading in our lives. They cried out to God and God came to their aid. And now God is fighting on their behalf. But their deliverance does not come immediately. They must still be patient and wait for the process to work out itself according to God's plan. And so you may be praying for a situation and wondering why, why am I suffering for so long? Why am I, why am I still sick? Why do I still not have a job? Why is my family still in a situation? I've been praying, I've been fasting. God is working on your, your behalf. It may not all work out in your time, but it's going to work out. There's a song that says in his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful in his time. And so it's important for us to keep our faith and trust in his in God. So Pharaoh and Egypt, they're all infested with flies, but there's no fly in Goshen, not even one. And so Pharaoh and all Egypt come to the realization that Pharaoh has limited power he, he he thinks he's brave he thinks he's bad he thinks he's all powerful but mm -mm, when god speaks there's nothing pharaoh could do and they come to realize how limited the power that pharaoh has the enemy may, may seem great sometimes it scares us when we see uh, his, when we hear his threats, when we see him, you know, speaking all kinds of evil and attacks against us, against our, our families, against our children, against the church. But the devil has limited power. And we don't need to be afraid of the devil because greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. And so when Pharaoh comes to the realization that he doesn't have the power to match God, what does he do? He tries to negotiate with God through Moses and says, well, what, what if they just worship right here in the land? 
do we sometimes try to negotiate with God? You know, um, uh, you know, uh, the job is what it pays my bills. And so they're asking for me to work on the Sabbath. And if I don't work on the Sabbath, I won't be able to pay my bills, even though God promises ask and it shall be given seek and you shall find knock and the door shall be open he says a cattle on a thousand hills are mine seek ye first the kingdom and all these things shall be added unto you god has promised that he will take care of our very needs but we look around and we're afraid of the, the, the evil one and so we try to negotiate with god because we haven't totally surrendered our wills to God's will. But half truth is still a lie. Half right is still 100% wrong. Don't try to negotiate with God and don't try to negotiate with the devil. It is the devil's job. The Bible says comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He is trying to deceive you into thinking that you can be a half Christian. That you can come to church every Sabbath and, and, and we can smile and laugh and say happy Sabbath and leave the church and then do things that are not pleasing in the sight of God. That we could fake the Christian walk, but our hearts are still corrupt. We're still bent on doing evil. We're trying to compromise. Half one foot in the church and the other one out. Pharaoh gives them permission to sacrifice as long as they do so in Egypt. Go ahead, he says. Do your sacrifice, but do it in Egypt, knowing that this was, would cause a great riot and conflict between the children of Israel and the Egyptian. But there's no compromising with God. And Moses understands this fully well and so he refuses to compromise with pharaoh god says that we must separate ourselves from this world be in the world but not of the world and moses would not settle for anything less separate yourselves from the wicked and profane for we cannot have fellowship both with the father of light and the world of darkness. They must observe the divine commandment. We must go. We must leave. We must break the bond that this world and the devil has on us. The bond of, for, of, for material things. The bond of selfishness. The bond of, of, of luxury and and, and 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 pride and vanity we must break the bond of this world that holds us captives that we are enslaved to and follow the command of god do you know that god could bless you with riches and wealth more than the devil can but we have to learn to trust in God. Though they were in the utmost degree of slavery to Pharaoh, yet in their worship of God, they say we must observe God's command. They are enslaved. They are being whipped. They are being punished. They are being killed. They, they, they have to work over time. They have to make straw, bricks out of straw, fetch their own straw and do all the stuff. And here is Pharaoh saying, hey, I can ease it up a little by letting you worship your God, but worship him right here. And they say, no, we are not going to compromise. They are slaves, but they are not enslaved to Pharaoh. They're not enslaved to the ways of the world. They're not enslaved to the mentality of the world. They're not enslaved to the God of Pharaoh, they are not enslaved. That's why when, the, when all of the pressure and the stress of life came upon them because of the hardship of that Pharaoh was putting on them, 
They knew exactly who to turn to. They called on the name of the Lord, their God. And God heard them because he's a faithful God. He says, before you call, I will answer. While you're yet speaking, I will hear. Can you see God? He's eager. He's at the door. He's waiting for you. Just call him. You know, it's, have, they call yet? They call yet? He's eager. He's ready for you to call. And so when they would not compromise, Pharaoh decides that he is going to give in. He, at least he claims he's going to give in. And so he comes up with this compromise. If you go and you talk to your God, I will let them go. But of course, after Moses and Aaron pray to their God and the flies are all gone, Pharaoh hardens his heart again because he doesn't want to lose because he hasn't yet fully understand, understood that God cannot be defeated. That the power of God is greater than his power and that whether or not he wants to, he will have to give in to this God. You know, it's, it's, it's the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Whether or not you want to, one day you're going to have to come to realize that, that he is God. He is in control. That the world and everything in it is subject to him and to his power. Whether you want to accept it, whether you like it or not, that he is Lord. And so, if you choose to be on his side, then he is going to work it out for you. Because he loves you. And he says, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. He wants to bless you. He wants to, to reward those that diligently seek him. Those who are faithful to him. So why fight him and be defeated in the end? And so there is a battle that's taking place here between God and Pharaoh to see who is God. As we know, there is none like him. He is God. And we know how the story will end. The same way we know how the story will end here, we know how the story of this world will end. In the end, the devil will be defeated as Pharaoh is defeated. And all those who follow him will be destroyed. My prayer is that we would choose to be on God's side. So that in the end, we will experience the glory of the promised land. The land of heaven where we will live with God forever and ever. Where there will be no more crying or dying, no more sadness, no more pain, no more suffering. There will be joy. There will be joy forevermore. My prayer is that we will remain faithful to God until the end. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Father, we thank you for the word that you have given to us tonight. Reminding us that you hear the cries of your people who are suffering. There are some are sick. There are those who are discouraged or broken. Some are facing financial challenges. Some are facing issues in the home with their families. Whatever the issues are, we bring them to you. And we know that the same God that heard the cry of the children of Israel still hears the cry of his people. So hear us, Lord. Answer us, we pray. Show up, we ask, as you showed up for the children of Israel. And deliver us from our situation. 
we stretch our hands to you and we pray that you will answer us. If not today, Lord, that's, it will be soon. So that we would rejoice and celebrate and testify of the goodness of God. That not only would we be reminded, but that those around us may know that there is none like you. That you're great, that you're awesome, that you're powerful, that you're compassionate, that you're forgiving, that you're loving, that you're faithful. So bless your people, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all and see you again on Wednesday night. Thank you.